This is Zach Yacoub from How to Get a Job in Sports.com, and I'm here with Evan Serkey, Head of Basketball Operations at Coa Sports. Uh, how are you? Doing all right. How about yourself? Great. I played Coa Baseball for about five years, and the culture is fantastic. I love the combination of proper coaching while maintaining a fun, safe environment. You have been with Coa for also almost five years. What about this organization is so special? Uh, so I think it's the ability to be um, pretty, I guess, flexible in what you uh, want to do and how you can do those things. Uh, kind of different from other organizations where you have to jump through a lot of hoops and go up a chain of command. I work directly underneath the CEO. So if there's anything that I need to do or make a decision on, I can go ahead and do that. Um, but he's always there, which is, um, you know, a good point of reference and someone that you could, you know, look to for advice. But for the most part, he trusts all of us with our decision making, things like that. So. Um, you know, it's good to know that we have that trust and that we can, you know, do our job the way we want to do it rather than being, you know, micromanaged in a way. So all the employees at COA are like a community, you'd say? You guys all work near each other in that facility, right? Yeah, so we have an open floor plan. Uh, we're actually building new office space as we've already outgrown the facility that we're in. Um, but yeah, we're all right next to each other. We can hear all the conversations. I mean, there's, I mean, obviously, if you gotta, you know, have a more private phone call, you can step outside and whatever it may be. But uh, we've expanded from, you know, uh, in just about 10 or 11 years, Tony started in his basement, who's the CEO, uh, to a, um, you know, a, a smaller office to a um, facility with just one batting cage and a lofted office. And now we're in our own 13,000 square foot facility with a basketball court, two batting cages. And now we're expanding even more. So we've already outgrown it. So, um, yeah, we're all a tight knit group. You know, we always... Uh, and are all deal with the same issues and opportunities so it's always good to you know bounce ideas off each other and have each other close by all right that's great yeah i remember the old facility that that thing was tiny i used to be so scared when i was playing catch that i would get yeah. hit by the guy next to me with like two lanes yeah, yeah so exactly. um you you uh you went to towson you played some some club ball there not not for the team but some the club ball. <laughs> what was playing yeah. a club sport like compared to being on the team so the club sport feel was, you know, you get the the competition that you're missing, you know, um, playing basketball my whole life. You know, I could have went in three school and played some basketball there. But um, I always thought in the back of my mind I might be able to play, you know, or walk on at Towson as a mid-major program that they are. But um, the club level was fun. You know, you probably just twice a week. They're from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., so pretty off hours. And then there are tournaments and games on the weekend. So, um, you know, we traveled to JMU, Villanova, Penn State, things like that, um, or even have, you know, scrimmages versus UMBC, and you try to set up scrimmages with, you know, other club teams like Maryland. We've been to, you know, College Park and things like that. So um, it's the competition that you're looking for uh, without the, the full-time commitment of, a, you know, a full-time student athlete. That's great. So a few years back, you attended uh, Quince Orchard High School. I actually live like a minute from QO. It seems like a great place. What made you want to come back and coach there? Uh, so it was my relationship with the coaching staff that I still had. So um, Coach Foringer is, you know, the current varsity coach there. Uh, he was, you know, my coach. And then growing up, I was under that pipeline for the Darnstown Cougars, which was, you know, uh, we ran all the same sets that QO ran and everything like that. So when we got to high school, we were ready to hit the ground running. Um, and, you know, the coaching staff was still there, and I wanted to help out. I still had, you know, um, a relationship with some of the kids that were there based on, you know, going to camps and coaching them in camps and things like that. So seeing them as a uh, counselor when I was playing, you know, and they were little kids, and now I'm their coach, and they're in high school trying to get to the next level, uh, you know, kind of it comes full circle. So it was definitely a great experience. Great. Speaking of camps, you've created a COA basketball camp. Can you speak a little mm -hmm. bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, uh, in this area, there are thousands of basketball camps. So it's really for the kids that, you know, are looking for something a little bit different. So the way we kind of differentiate ourselves from the other camps is we have swimming involved, you know, so a lot of basketball camps don't have swimming. Um, but, you know, there's a bunch of camps down the road. So WJ, Coach Chase Reader has a great WJ camp that, you know, wasn't around when I was in camps. Coach Fonger still has his camps. Coach Lon has his camps at Whitman. So there's thousands of camps each high school. And, you know, Bullis has a camp too. So. Uh, it's kind of diluted and saturated with all the basketball camps that we have. But uh, I know for some kids that love the COA culture and love our coaching staff, you know, we wanted to create something for them, um, you know, and that's what, really what it's about because we're with them 
you know, during the season twice a week and then on the weekends where it's summer camp, now you're here five days a week. And just to build that relationship even more, which is the biggest difference, I think, between COA and all the other programs out there. That sounds nice. And then a little swim right after a basketball <laughs> workout that does sound nice. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So before you were promoted to the head of basketball operations, you worked uh, with the flag football part of COA for a little bit, which I did. I think it was really fun. So can yeah. you tell me about what your role there and how the flag football is? Yeah. So um, that's how I actually started out as a part-time employee. Um, they called me the manager of flag football, which, you know, kind of my real first job outside of college. I was like, all right, sweet. Call me a manager. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Um, and it was a seasonal job. It was like, okay, this is, you know, part-time. I'm still working 30, 35 hours, but it's definitely under 40. And um, I had to earn my keep. So from there, it was all the things that you don't really think about when you show up on game day. So it's all the scheduling, make sure the fields are aligned, making sure the coaches are there, making sure the uniforms are there, um, you know, field permits, scheduling the coaches, making sure they're getting paid, keeping track of their hours, and then making sure that game day operations are going smoothly. So when you walk up, you see that tent, you know where to go, you know who your coaches are, you know who your teammates are, you know when you're playing, who you're playing, um, the rules and all that good stuff. So we were really on the other side of it. Um, and then, you know, from there, I must have done a pretty good job. They promoted me to a full-time role, which was the yeah, assistant athletic director. Um, and, you know, from there kind of grew into a basketball operations role as the uh, basketball program had two part-time guys that were off-site so I was the in office all in office representative for them um you know and that kind of just took their role <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you seem like you have a great passion for what you do do you think that that's important to love what you do yeah absolutely so what's unique about why I think I still do what I do in the youth sports realm is um a testament to my youth coaches that I had so uh, I mentioned a little bit about our the Darn Sun Cougar basketball team, which was, you know, the youth team that was pipelined in the QO. I had the same coach. His name's Coach Dave Griffin. Um, a lot of people know him in the basketball community. He was my coach from fifth grade uh, all the way up to 12th grade because he was the assistant coach at Quince Orchard High School for, you know, the varsity team and JV. So he was with me and grooming me and, you know, my nine teammates that I had for my whole, you know, my whole basketball playing career. And he shaped me who I am. He shaped all of us. A lot of us are still in the basketball world, whether it be coaching, training, um, you know, or just, you know, being passionate about the sport still. And I think that plays a big role based on the effect they had on all he had on all of us. And then me really just wanting to give it back and make sure the kids get a similar experience. That's cool. That's cool. So I was actually just about to ask who your mentors are. You've told me about those two coaches do you have anyone else or like a family it doesn't have to be a coach or yeah I mean so Mike Gibson you know who we spoke about yeah, earlier, know. he's definitely he's you know number one mentor and then um I mean my father for sure you know um just being a role model father that he's been uh is something that uh you know as I grow older something that I want to be and portray as a father myself one day in the future um but then I mean it definitely would be you know my basketball coach is Dave Griffin who's no longer around Coach Jeff Sims also was the JV coach at Quince Orchard, no longer around. Um, and then Coach Foringer, who's the current varsity coach. So I'd say those, you know, four or five gentlemen would definitely be my mentors at this point. Okay. So that's good. We all know that life is not on an even playing field. Some people have, you know, advantages. What would you say to kids who want your type of job but don't have the resources, like to maybe say go to college or afford to spend a lot of free time in, in high school? So, I mean, for a lot of people that come into COA who are looking to coach, whether it be at a higher level one way or the other, is just make sure you're available. So um, we have our full-time staff, but we have a lot of part-time members. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done that we can offer up to part-time guys. So, um, you know, when I worked in flag football, there were days when I had to go line the field, but I couldn't do it by myself in a, you know, an hour window. So um, I'd rely on coaches and, you know, people around and available. So. Um, I would tell those guys, just make sure you're available, make sure you're reaching out. So um, whether they're, you know, our phone numbers are posted online, you know, and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm really interested in like football or basketball. This is why I'm interested. This is what my experience is. This is why I'm passionate about it. It's like, okay, hmm, like, let's see what we can do to help them out. So, um, you know, there's Jersey Day where we got to sort thousands of jerseys. You know, that's something where we can bring someone in to um, help us out and boom your foot's in the door you know depending on how that performance is your first time your first interaction that's something that sticks in the back of the minds of our minds so when we're out there we're like who else can we meet and who else can we use that's out here that we need 
um, and you kind of just keep being available. I just say, um, you know, flexibility and you're available. So uh, that's how some people got their roles, you know. Um, I'll give a class, an example. We had this baseball coach who's now a full-time staff member. He doesn't have a college degree, um, but he coached baseball um, just because he loved the sport. He showed that he was educated on the sport. And then he uh, organized a meeting with a director and was like, hey, um, please let me know if there's anything you can do. I'm available. I want to help out. He's, you know, he's great with the kids and everything like that. And then, you know, it worked out because he's always there. And then, boom, there's a full-time opportunity available. And he earned his keep, and now he's a full-time um, staff member. So That's good. So get your foot in the door, take every opportunity, and you never know what can happen. Yeah, That's pretty good. much. <laughs> so what would you say the most important qualities besides being available for some, someone needs to have to have a job like yours? Uh, I think you got to be able to be versatile in any role that it may be, you know, just um, you got to be able to work in other sports like, uh, you know, basketball is my number one sport, I played baseball, but I didn't play football at a high level. I played one year flag football and they're like, okay, we have a flag football position available. I was like, okay, sure. I'm down. I'm in. Um, so I think you got to be versatile, be able to, you know, form and mold in any realm that it may be as long as it's in the sport that you want to, or in the sports world, you know, where you start at is not going to be where you end at. Um, so I would just be, you know, versatile. Okay. So what's the best advice you've ever got from anyone? The best advice I've ever gotten from anyone. Mm. I'd say, you know, don't burn any bridges. You know, uh, you never know when you're going to need someone. And, you know, that base that comes in fold with, uh, and twofold with, uh, you know, um, uh, the connections it's always about who you know so any person you come in contact with is not by accident you're gonna you know meet them for a reason you don't know what it's gonna be for or you know for whatever it may be like just us right now you know you never know when you know we're gonna need someone else to rely on someone so you don't want to burn any bridges you want to make sure you always put a good impression on and you want to always you know make sure you put your best foot forward it might not always be your best day but you never know when you're gonna need someone or someone's help so um, you know, kind of elaborate on that. There's times when I'm just at, um, or back then when I was in, you know, playing basketball at LA Fitness, you know, I've actually interviewed two guys. They're like, oh, I remember you played at LA Fitness. I recognize the face, but, you know, now they, you know, work at Koa at a different world or in a different sport, but I was able to introduce them to another person that's going to be better fitting for them at that time. So, um, yeah, <laughs> interesting right. stuff. Yeah, that's good. So you said right out of, college you got this job managing all these different responsibilities and and people so how did you become able to do that did it just come naturally to you or did you like learn it in Towson no yeah so actually when I graduated from college I got a job with body armor um that's okay. horse strength um so that was a part-time job but the development of that came from college you know so um in college, I was heavily involved with my fraternity. So a lot of people join Greek life, you know, for the social aspect where, yeah, that's great. Like I've met hundreds of people, which builds your network, you know, that really helped to help me get my internship at Towson University in the athletic department as well. Um, but I was heavily involved in a leadership role at my, uh, at my fraternity. So that is where I learned how to manage people, develop relationships, um, be versatile, you know, be very, um, you know, able to interact with many, you know, diverse group of students, people, staff members, things like that. So that's where it really learned, stemmed from. So um, I would definitely say even, you know, advice, I guess, is in college, I uh, didn't even think about this till now is, you know, get involved and, you know, find ways to get involved. So, um, you know, even at the Towson Club Basketball, I was a vice president. So I was going to, you know, meetings with uh, the rec department, trying to figure out ways to do uh, fundraising things like that and then you know my fraternity I was going to leadership co councils like leadership groups conferences things like that so that's where it really uh, stemmed from awesome that's great I really appreciate your time thank you so much for talking to me